Morning everybody, David R. Becker here with Becker Art. And this morning I'm going to challenge myself and I'm going to be doing a gouache and watercolor painting of a city scene, wet city scene. And it's done on Stonehenge Aqua paper, uh, 300 pound. And we're going to already put masking fluid down and we're going to try to do that kind of a rainy scene, wet streets. And as you can see, I'm using both my uh, gouache and my watercolors together and really they're the same thing you know basically they're watercolor one's opaque and one is transparent I'm sorry I got that one off. <laughs> and um so we're gonna i don't have a i don't think i have a um this is not a paint along um I, i've been starting to do these um sunday morning paintings i had done them outside and um i probably start doing them again outside also once i get my things together with um having um, a, a, a winter um, setup, I guess. I don't have a winter setup right at the moment. And if, um, like a good clothing <laughs> to keep me warm. But today we're just gonna um, work on trying to put the um, watercolor and the gouache together as one. And there is no paint along per se that you, you know, go to my site and look at it and see what I'm doing. Um, but and um, paint along like we do. But if you do want to paint along, and if you do um, want to see it, I don't put out the picture that I'm gonna be doing because I never know until like maybe Saturday evening when I'm, I was just thinking about this, what I was gonna do today. And so here we go. So I'm gonna do the background first. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Didn't clean this brush very well. <laughs> and also you may notice um, I just got a new camera and so I'm kind of testing out my new camera. Um, hopefully it'll be a little bit more clear. This is a 4K um, thing. I still got to get the lighting a little, probably a little bit better and hopefully the sound is okay. I'm doing, trying a couple of different things today, this evening, or maybe this morning. And we're, my boy, I forgot what to do with this brush. <laughs> All right. So here's my um, gouache. Those are all my gouache colors. And this is all my transparent watercolor, all Holbein. And this is not the acrylic gouache. This is the watercolor gouache. And so we're going to try to just use both of them together. And I'm going to start it out like a watercolor, more, meaning, meaning that it's thinner. And it's going to be transparent for most of the time. And then in the end, I will go and make it opaque. And meaning that I will go thick. And I'm going to go right to this building, which is in the foreground, which is darker. With watercolor, you tend to go from light to dark. And so I'm going to do my background wash here first. And um, I'm going to keep it grays, my gray tones and stuff. And and like I can put this first wash through the sky because it's going to be my light, lightest wash. The lights, and I also put masking fluid down here. I use whole by masking fluid, which is this right here. And I put it down here. You can see right by where the lights are going to be in the street. There's a big thing in this picture is the white of the streets and stuff. And um, I'm going to maybe even put white on there afterwards. So, but like I said, first I'm going to start it out like a watercolor. And I'll probably finish it off like an opaque watercolor, a gouache watercolor. It's becoming very popular. And I know a lot of people use the the acrylic wash, which um, Holbein has. A really, It's really becoming very, very popular. And it's very cool. And actually, if you look, I'm going to make this in the grays of a kind of a blue green turquoise to a red. So my red and green are going to be my compliments. And so I'm just going to go from there. And if you have any questions, I'll look up every once in a while. I do have it up on, on Facebook. And so if you have any questions, just go ahead and ask. I hope you all look up once in a while and see if you guys are asking. And so I'm going to just do the background here first and kind of a and kind of a turquoise kind of looking sky. And as it goes down here, I'm making it darker. And remember with watercolor, you have to make your, your color, your values, at least 20% darker than you want it to be, or than you um, see, because it's gonna dry by 20% lighter. Now, when it comes to gouache and you put it on thick, that is doesn't that doesn't play as much of a role in that because you're putting it on thick, and so then 
you'll have a lot of pigment and it's covering up your white behind behind the pigment, which is opaque, right? So you don't have to worry so much about that. But when you're doing transparent watercolor like I'm doing now, where you see white through the white, then yes, you have to um, make it 20% darker than you think, it, otherwise it looks wrong. You know, if it, if it looks right while it's wet, it's wrong because it's gonna get, it's gonna get a lot darker or a lot lighter when it dries. So I'm kind of using a grayish greenish color, like a turquoise, I'm making my own turquoise kind of color. And again, it's wet. And so when things are wet, they give me a soft edge, right? And here I'll have a little, maybe there's even a little bit of lightness shining through the cloud. And I, get, I love using turquoise, and not turquoise, I like using um, lavender with turquoise because it gives me even a cooler gray. A grayish that tones down my my already turquoise color and kind of dulls it down a little bit and so some of that will go into the street right away and I, I do this a little bit I would do a little bit more complicated subject matter than on my Thursday nights only because I'm doing this basically for myself I like to come in here on Sunday morning after I watch my favorite program online Sunday morning and I just like to um because it's that TV show inspires me a lot to um, they show artists and actors and all kinds of different things and so it's always fun to afterwards go ahead and and try my hand at my art and i'm always trying to test things test things out see how i can do certain things um, like i said i'm going to try i've never used them both together kind of like this fashion where i'm putting both together at one and now let's go down here and get the street And uh, this is going to be like a more of a lavender down here. And you notice I go through everything because as I go through stuff, um, it's when it dries, I'm going to go on top of it darker. So I don't have to go around certain items to make them look darker in front, right? So I'm just going to, and if you want a hard edge, I'd have to wait for stuff to dry. But let me do this building back here. You see these, there's buildings back there in the, in the atmosphere. And so I'm gonna take the same colors I've used back there. Even if, even if this building was like a red, like this church is kind of a brick red, um, even if that was like that, you would not put it like that because you want to push it back, right? And so I'm just gonna take and just um, use enough pigment so it just pushes it back. And I want it out of focus. And so getting a soft edge is uh, perfect for that. And then maybe down here. And so it's just in the distance. in there to dull it down even more and you actually I have grays them right down here are actually grays gray colors and so I can use that too and so just going in here I'm going down to the cars and again this is my lights and so I don't have to worry too much about the the darks yet and I'm going to get some of these brighter colors in here so in my gouache, like especially in the street here, I want to kind of get a wet and I'm going to put it by the, because the white of the car lights also give me a light warmth in here. So I'm going to put that in there right away. And if I water down my gouache, it's the same as actually using a transparent watercolor because I'm using it very um, thin and I'm working with a lot of water, so it becomes transparent too. So it's really the same thing depending on how you use it with what you use it with. Like, if I'm using a lot of water, then yes, it's transparent. Um, even though the medium of gouache has finer ground and it's a lot more pigment, it's more pigmented than the watercolor. And so that's like it's opaque. It makes things, it, it covers up things. And so look at all these beautiful lights that are going to be shining in there. And now, and that's all soft edge again because I have all that, all the, um, all the water down. And so let me go get some more grays back here. And I work my, I work from background to foreground and I make it so that you see what's in the background. And then I just, if I need a hard edge in the foreground, I definitely have to wait for it to dry. 
but since it is a timed thing here and I gotta get it done, sometimes I'll even go over that with thick, thicker pigment and so it won't be a, a super hard edge because I um, won't let it dry in time. I do have a um, heater here, a uh, heat gun, but I like to have the watercolor dry itself because the watercolor tends to get this soft edge and it keeps on working and gets lighter as it goes along. If you if you take that process and make it too fast, then you get don't get as nice a um, look to your washes. Now this is almost maybe too much of a wash or of a, a, a soft edge for a building back there, but that's okay. I'm gonna deal, I'm just gonna go with it. And so here's a building back there. And everything in front of that part of this top of this roof is going to be darker in front of it so i can go right through this and i don't have to worry about what it's going into like i don't have to do that piece of the roof without having to go on this edge where it's going to be darker i just go through it and i just do this is the roof and then later on i'll put the dark on top of that and once you get to learn that and you don't do pieces because then your paintings fall together better like you're going through and you're putting things together a little bit nicer see if there's anybody watching uh, all right we got a few people watching thanks so much for coming by on this Sunday morning happy holidays by the way and so see there's my greenish blues my turquoise and then as I come forward I'm gonna get warmer and warmer and I'm gonna put a little bit of warmth and I kind of like to use the gouache for that because I just it covers you know it covers better the gouache covers better because there's more pigment and um I'm still, like I said, I'm still using it wet. I'm still making soft edges, but it covers, it covers really well. And so, okay, we got that. And now let's put in our, our warmth through here, like through the side of the cars and the street. And I don't really look at see what color the cars themselves are. I kind of go more for what the area is. And uh, <clears throat> it's not my class. If you're ever going to put a color on a car, what you got to do is think that there's only five colors that they pretty much all the manufacturers use on cars. So you don't really have to worry about getting something different in color. So basically, there's five colors to cars. There's white, black, uh, gray, which is like silver and um, then red and blue and then you have your every once in a while you get the bright colors like Jeep uses a lot of bright colors like lime green and kind of yellows and stuff but not very often so most most of them are those five colors that you're gonna see and when I say gray that's like a taupe also and and black and so it's not within that field so this is um, like if this car if I wanted to make it a little bit more um, and to the warmth, like a red, though this car looks like it's white, but it's in shadow, right? And it's all in shadow, so we don't have to worry about that. And these are my darks, and so my darks will come in in a second. I'm, I'm kind of stalling here so I can let this dry a little bit so I can go right in. And I'm, I really should be getting this big church first next because that's the biggest area. So the first step was like what I just did, and that would be my, my lights. And my lights determine my color scheme. So I'm gonna put my color scheme in there, um, being green and red, kind of like as my complements. And so from there, then I will go to my second step, which is the large, medium, and dark washes. And large, medium, I mean the large, medium, and dark. So that would be a dark, medium wash. And this is this big building here is a dark. Happy holidays, Janet. Oh, the grandkids say I'm a great artist. Well, thanks, Tom. Thank you. <laughs> so we're going to go here, do a little bit of, right there. And so, like, again, I'm waiting a little bit because if I put a wash right here right now, it's still it's still a little wet. And so if I can't get a nice hard edge because the hard edge will be really, on the steeple right there, will be nice to have a really hard edge. So I'm just waiting a little bit longer, and then it'll get nice and hard edged. And so while I'm waiting for that to dry, maybe I'll do it down here where I didn't put anything. And so I'll just start there instead. And like the windows that are lit up in there, this is what I'm going to do my gouache where I'm going to put it on thick. So I don't have to worry about going around little things like windows. And actually some of them are lit up, but some of them are darker. So the darker ones are easier than doing the light ones. And so 
We're gonna go in here with, there's a warmth, right? There's a warmth to this. Um, I'm gonna make a brown, a little bit of purple, a little bit of red. I don't wanna make it too, and so I wet the area as I go along, and so this is a hard edge. Inside the church, uh, I mean, inside the, the look of the church here, um, that's where I wet it. And I wet it with the surface of my brush. And that rooftop is going to be a little bit darker. And so I'm basically covering everything that's going to be dark with water that just happens to have this dark color that I'm using on it, in it. And so, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean that that would be the finished color. I'm wetting it with this color, but I will change things off a little bit and I will float other pigment and other colors in there. So see, I'm just, that, that's basically one color, but now this is all wet, right? And that's with my floating my pigment theory all the time. And I always do this, you know, do your floating your pigment. And here I'm going around the cars, negative painting around the cars. And then it's all wet. And now I'm gonna think, okay, let's see, what can I put in, what can I throw in there? A little bit of orange, a little bit of blue, because the blue that is in the sky will reflect into the red a little bit, right? So a little bit of that in there too. And since this is my center of interest too, uh, why not get some nice bright colors in there? Some red, some really bright red. And I've got to get the edges. Those are important. The edges have to be looking like the shape of the church. And those hard edges, all you need is the outer edge. What's on the inside of this edge really doesn't show that it's a church. That just shows the detail. And that I can do later on too. I'm getting the big wash first. Getting the big overall wash. And then see how I'm putting other colors in there and this goes up then. It goes up on the side here. And as I put it down, as soon as I, I touch my brush to the paper, I realize if it's too wet or dry. Ooh, I just went in an area I shouldn't have gone in. Oh well. And so now this is dry enough. See, I'm getting a hard edge, but if I put it down and I see it's gonna bleed, I don't touch it, I, I go away from that. Let's put a little more turquoise in there. And like I said, even though I'm using gouache and watercolor at the same time, when I'm working wet and wet like this, it doesn't matter which one of these pigments I use because they all, it's all just pigment in water. And if I make gouache that thin, um, it covers up nicely, it, it covers up the thing, but depending on how much of the paint I use, but it is gouache, and if I do it really wet, it becomes a watercolor. It almost becomes a transparent watercolor. It happens to be a little bit more um, opaque. A little bit more opaque, and also a lot of times it becomes pastel-like because the colors are, um, you know, you have some white in them, but one thing about Holbein gouache is that they don't use white a whiting agent to make their colors opaque which a lot of other companies do that. They use whiting agents that they put into their paint to make it opaque. Holbein doesn't do that. They just use more paint, a lot more paint and thicker paint, amount of thinly ground paint that is just, you know, gorgeous colors. Look at these colors. They're just as um, colorful as your watercolor and that you have. I'll put a little bit of blue up here. Get my little crowns up here, little, little steeples and what else we got up there? It's gonna be rooftop. All right, and so as I get this dark and through here, this is also a negative painted my cars. And a few people asked this week what negative painting was. The newcomers, negative painting is painting around an object to create it. So the top of these cars are not painted actually a color; they're painted around to get the top of the car. That's negative painting. And so from that, I go into the church, and then right from the church, I go right into the street with the same colors that I just used up there. Just on top, I'll just use the same colors because this, when a street is wet, it's almost like a, if you're doing a lake or if you're doing anything that's um, shiny. Anything that's shiny basically is reflecting things around it. And so this now in the what will be in the water, will be in the street. And so I'm gonna do it like it was a, like it was um, a wet surface or like a lake. You know, it could be like a lake. And depending on how much water you have on the street, 
it will determine how much reflection. And also, if there's windy, if it's windy, it'll give a, a little bit of where you don't see it like a mirror, because everything becomes a mirror, like a mirror. And so I can use the colors above and just bring them below. See, I'm going to put the same color of the sky in here. A little bit darker, though. And also, depending on if there's a shadow underneath the car, that would be a little bit darker, right? Because the car is going to block some of the lighting. So let's make that a little bit darker underneath the car. So you just go in here, and this is all underneath the car. And there may be some parts where it's shiny because it's reflecting more of the sky. Like here, the sidewalk is reflecting more of the sky. It's all being determined by what's above it. And so I look at what's above, and I just take the same colors, and I bring it down, and then I make it all wet. I make the whole street wet. And this is more of a complicated subject matter because it's a city, so there's a lot of drawing involved. And so that's what's more important when a, 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 a sketch like this is that you get your drawing on. And that's where you learn how to either draw really well or use yourself a projector or whatever way you can to get that drawing right. Because the drawing is always number one. I mean, you have to get the drawing in there right. And it's great if you learn how to draw. You know, it helps you out in so many ways to learn how to draw from your imagination and sometimes from the subject matter that you're seeing in front of you. Good morning from Indiana. Hello, Betsy. Good morning, Ginny. And so this steeple will definitely look at how it's going to come down here and it's going to come down and it's wet now. And so I'm going to get soft edges and I'm going to get the shape of this building within the, within the um, street here a little bit. And then there's going to be darker parts. Like there's actually be the wheels, but I don't want to get those yet. I'm just getting the colors from above. Get some grays through here. And then what I want to do is I want to show that the surface of the street sometimes will, some parts are less water, some more water. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out some of it. I'm going to take some of it out and just make it look like there is a, there could be a line, you know, the street lines, the markings. And it could be something in the street that's making that part thinner in water, not as much water. So it's not reflecting as much. It could be a wind, wind there. It could be a whole different surface that's a little bit different. And so I'm making the street look wet and also giving it the lines in the street. And, and some parts are drier. Some parts are drier. Oop, that's not, I don't want to do that. And so when you go up and down, across, and I'm using the perspective of the street. And now some of this blue, I'm going to take in there and make it make a little bit thicker. And this is going to be the opaque part now. I'm putting a little bit more opaques in there. I'm just going to pick that across the top here. And it's still wet, so I will get it to look soft-edged, but it's going to cover up some of the paper because I'm using it pretty thick. I can even use white. And again, um, this could not be done for like a TWSA. You couldn't put this in this, that show because I'm using opaque colors. I am using opaque, and that's a transparent water for the society. And there's a difference between Transparent Water for Society and, you know, um, using gouache. Because gouache, like I said, is opaque watercolors. But that doesn't mean you should just, if you really want to get into that show, yes, use all transparent. But there's times when it's fun to try to use other things besides just one, one medium. Actually, I would even enjoy, in my classes at Dillman's, I'm going to be doing where I'm going to have it um, we're going to be doing gouache and watercolor, but I'm also going to use acrylic gouache because acrylic gouache has a little bit of a different feel too. It's kind of fun because you can use it really thick and get the acrylic effect, like how to use acrylics. All right, and so now let's go into, that's pretty much our street and I can get thicker, I guess I need to have this, that's, that's right there is the masking fluid that I put in so I keep it white. And so I can rub around that and take that out later. But now, again, we're still on our second stage, and that's our big darks, our big darks and mediums. And so this, this building right here is a big medium and dark color. And so I'm going to first go with a little bit more red. And this is not going to be my darkest color yet on here. But I'm going to make it pretty dark, and it's farther forward. I'll give it a nice hard edge. This is dry. That, the sky is dry now, and so I can go in here and then just get the big area of dark. Just taking all these colors I have on my palette, take a little bit of the opaqueness and a little bit of the... See how it just covers up more? It's very interesting. 
I mean, it's it's actually I love the fact that it kind of covers up some of the th parts underneath, but yet still um, gives you that bright color. And I think many people think of gouache as being too pastel, which the old colors used to be like that. They used to be very, very opaque and very white. Like they had a lot of white, so they looked very pastel colored like. And so I'm going to, instead of making these windows look like they're dark inside, I'm going to make it with a little bit more orange and make them look like there's light on inside here. And I went right over my awnings here. And so um, I'm going to put people in front of that. And so the umbrellas, I can either make dark or light. Let's make them, let's make this one light. And take my little smaller brush. So I'm going to make it look like that is on, like that's lit up. The, it, the store is lit up over there, and here's a, another umbrella. And actually, I've got to make the car here, negative paint the car. The people will be darker. And here's the front of the hood of the car. Here's the sidewalk. So you can't just think of um, like you're doing a person. Or doing, you're doing the whole area, and so that's what you got to think of. How can I do this whole area? Now, this didn't get dark enough, so I'm still wet, so I have plenty of time. And like the awning, I kind of went into the awning, but look at I can take out by rubbing out. I let the paint go absorb back into the brush. And then, so this is my medium tone. This is like a middle tone. This is not my darks on this building. This is more of a middle tone. It's a little bit more red in there. A little bit thicker. And I think one thing about gouache is that you start using a little bit thicker paints. And I think most problem that beginners have in watercolor or gouache in general is they don't use enough paint. They don't use enough paint and they look at the object and they go, wow, that's that's too dark or that's dark enough. When it's wet, though, if it's that color you want, then that's wrong because you have to make it 20% darker than you actually think it's going to be that you want it because then it'll dry to the, where you want it to be. Again, it's a 20% difference in, in value when it dries compared to when it's wet. Biggest and hardest thing for watercolors to understand is that you cannot make it the color that it is when you look at it. It's got to be a little bit darker, and um, then when it dries, it will be to what you want it to be. So this is a this is going to be a, underneath the car. And there's a reflection down here. I'm just going to make it that go downward. Same thing here. And this is not my darkest dark yet. This is my middle tone darks. I'm going to go darker yet when it comes to my third stage which is detailed darks. Detailed darks are all the small things then. This again is still the big area. And now here, look at the building is gonna be right there and you just bring it down through there. It's reflecting into the walk, into the street. So right in here, you go down here. I'll put that in there. And then break it up a little bit too. Because like there's things going on in the street that's all gonna make it a little bit different. There's always things happening in the street. I mean, there's repaired parts that are different. And so there could be a manhole cover in there. And all right, so that's a big area now. That's my big middle tones, my big middle tones and darks. And now I'm pretty much at my detailed darks, but I still have like this, this is gonna be my detailed dark too, but this is the bigger of the detailed darks. And so I'll get the smaller detailed darks first and then work actually the bigger ones first, then go work down to my small, small stuff. And so right now, I still have to go to the background, get this stuff going here. I feel that needs to be a little bit darker, hard-edged. Maybe there's a building right here that's a little bit harder-edged. There's like an awning right here I'm just making up. There's maybe the side of the street, the sidewalk. And then maybe the, the sidewalk itself has lines in it. And then there may be a person back there too later on. Again, this is my middle tone details. And then I'm gonna start going with my small brushes to get the detail detail. Let's just go in here. Let's get a little bit of this in there. Let's get a little bit more color in there. Here, the side of the street has a little bit of a. I'm gonna put a manhole or like a little graded thing right there. Cover that up. All right. So detail stage. Detail stage now. What does that mean? That means things like branches and the little cars back here. So let's start with the cars in the distance. So here we're gonna go, and this is my detailed darks, detailed dark stage now. 
So I'm gonna get the wind, windshields. Usually with the cars, what I do is I make the windshields are usually dark depending if they're reflecting the sky or if they look like you're looking inside. And so that's what's happening here. I'm making it look like they're like I'm looking inside. Then usually the side of the car, depending the side of the car and underneath is the darkest. But I go away from the light. So this is the side of the car. And then I put masking fluid down for the actual headlights so I don't have to worry about the headlights. I just go underneath the car. And I notice back here, I'm not gonna make it as dark as up here. Back here, it's still aerial, aerial perspective is in effect so that I can make everything super contrasty back here because I don't need to. I, I can wait and then as I come forward, it's gonna get really dark. Here, I'm just, just, just slightly putting in some of the darker colors, but not so dark that it, it, it makes too much contrast. Not too much contrast back here yet. And then I noticed that I'm going to get rid of some of the lights. So if I make the darks darker, that makes the lights lighter. So the reflections in the street become a little bit lighter. There's like those little things back here. And now I have to wait and hopefully take the masking fluid off when I get this part done. Any questions, just let me know. Let's see. While I'm waiting for this to dry back here, I'm going to start putting in the things that I would normally put in at the very end, but um, what the heck, I might as well put them in now. I'll put these little branches in. There's nothing going to go in front of this or behind it, so let's just put them in right now. I'm just going to make a nice dark and their little branches. And, and don't make these look real. I mean, if you got to copy it to a point where you're putting every pencil line in there, that's fine because you really, I see some people do these trees and it looks so unreal. And so really work them from thick to thinner and they get down to where you almost don't see. And then maybe a couple of leaves that are just still hanging on in, the, in these trees and try to use a really, really thin, thin brush to get them really thin and follow the drawing. Cause if it looks good in the, in the picture, then just copy that basically and went really thin Real thin branches, little dots here and there to make it look like the little buds at the very end. You know, you, you're not gonna be able to tell if this is a spring, summer, winter, or fall. It's not summer because there's no leaves in the tree, but it could be, you know, winter, it could be spring, or just coming up. And but I'm not gonna be determining that at all. You won't notice that at all. I'll take my other brush here and I'm gonna get some pretty dark darks going here. So now I want to use a little bit more of the gouache because I want it to really fill in. I want this to fill in so that when I put this down, um, it's gonna be sharp, opaque, and I'm gonna make it nice and dark so it's gonna be that value. Light post. And if you needed to use a ruler, you can use a ruler. I've done a couple of things where I've used rulers and I've guided the ruler, but um, usually I can do a pretty, pretty nice sharp line just by, you know, starting and don't stopping. And so then I'm gonna use my smaller brush, my smaller flat to get these, the, the, the little light here. And then we're gonna do the pole back there. Be, if there's one back there, it'll be a little bit lighter. And again, um, I'm, tending, I'm tending this time to use a little bit more opaque gouache so that I'm not using it tra very transparent, but um, still all works. Okay, I'm gonna go sideways. So it's easier for me to take the, the brushwork sideways than it is to make it, to make it up and down. We're used to um, drawing across like when we're writing so it's easier for me to do that across than it is doing it up and down and now we'll go back to up and down here and now we're going to use our small rigger brush again for you know this is basically the whole and I'm, what i'm doing is i'm just waiting for this stuff to dry over here so why not you know well, this part's dry so i might as well get this in here right now you can see that's not as dry and i'm getting a little bit of 
blurriness in there, but that's okay. It's a corner and it doesn't really matter. Get a nice dark dark. And this is a little bit more opaque. Like I said, I'm using a little bit more gouache in this section because I don't need to make it transparent. I just want it to be in there thick and I'm just getting what I wanted to get. I want to get the drawing right and there's not much floating of pigment anyways in a line. Like I can't get much floatiness in there. But you can. I mean, I can go back in with a brush and I can put other colors in there. Like if I want to reflect like another color, like I want to warm red on this side, I can go back in there and just put a little bit of warmth in there. So it's not like you're ever stuck with it if you think it's too thick. No, you can put other thing, just wet it. And now this, I'm just going to, it's pretty much solid. And so I'm just going to go in here with this brush and just kind of go down quickly. And see how my brush is kind of separated because it's a little damp. And that makes it perfect. If I wanted those things to separate, then I would just put water on the brush. So know how to use your brush. Know what your brush is capable of and try different techniques with your brushes. And to learn that, a lot of times what I do is I just take and practice with my brush and do different things with my brush to see what it, it can do. And I can get darker in here later with those lines, but overall, always the big areas first. Now a little gray, grayish blue for the background. Way back there, there's a, the light, the lights and stuff, and in the street. And so see how light that is back there? And then all kinds of different things happening back here that you know, I'm not quite sure what they are. I could do this building again and make it a little bit darker, but I kind of like how it's just blurred out. I'm going to keep it blurred out. Here I will put white in there for the lights. I will not... I didn't put masking fluid there, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take pure white and put my lights on. And so then I'm going to go back here, a little bit darker. And see how I work from back to front? I'm coming forward as I, as I work. And it goes from background, and it's just coming forward. And I notice these rooftops didn't get quite dark enough. And I will, I think I will do a little bit more on that building back way in the distance. Because it's like I like to have it just a little bit more in focus. Just a little bit. And so I'm just going to take my brush here and just kind of make a hard edge. And then that's a little bit too dark, and so I'll just pick up some of it. I'll pick up with, with my brush. But now I'm getting a hard edge. Before I was working while I was wet, and so I wasn't getting that hard an edge. And so now I got it just a little bit harder. So I get to look at the side of the building a little bit more. I can even put little lines in there to make it look like the windows. And then maybe there's a building back there too. And then the rooftops, I think, should be a little bit darker of the church. The rooftops are uh, still lighter than the church, but I want to get them a little bit more worked out a little bit. So you can see them and see how they're just a little bit darker here and there. Here I'll put a little bit of something with a little church behind this church. Or another steeple. And I'm not working as wet now. As you can see, I'm getting hard edges. And I'm not working as wet. Just so down here. That shouldn't have been as dark. I'm going to get a few little um, crosses up there, probably. Same thing up here. All right. So this side, I'm coming, I'm coming across here. Coming across. Now let's get our windows dark on the front here. Nice dark window. Again, I'm at detail stage, and this is going to take a little bit longer than the big big washes, only because you're spending more time and trying to get the look of the actual car and the windshield and and the grill in front. Like the grill in front is nice and dark. Underneath the car, now this cars are going in this direction. So there's a couple cars back here, and there's a little bit of line. So these are going opposite direction. And here's a tire. Let's do the windshield windshields first. And then I see I'm just using one color, but that I, when I look at it, I go, well, there's going to be in this window, there's also going to be a little bit of color reflecting from the church into there, right? Or if not, at least something that's kind of the co same colors as that. And now let's get our fine brush. And actually, the church's windows. I'm going to just get those things a little bit darker. I think I'm going to make this side of the thing just slightly darker of the church. So I'm going to take this brush. And this is like not really happening on the church itself, but I want to make it look like one side is a little bit lighter than the other side. So I'm going to take right down the middle here. I'm just going to 
make a line on the church and then wet it with the colors that the church already is but just make it a little bit darker so that it has the look like the front and the side giving it dimension and giving it details and give it perspective all those things are I can just do by just touching like a little line here and then touch for the two windows the windows can be like right there one two three Again, depends on how detailed you want to take it. You know, some people like really detailed. They make it down to where they take a small little, really small little brush and do it. That's fine. I'm more of an impressionist, so I kind of have an impression of what that church is going to look like. It's not identical, probably. Exactly. Like, every window is perfect. Maybe I'll put this little like that. One, two, three. The side of this is a little bit, goes in a little bit. Windows on the bottom, the side of this car is probably a little bit darker. The hood. I still haven't got it underneath yet. I don't got the underneath part as well done yet. The side of this car, the front. That's the front of this car, windshield. But then I've got to get these parts darker for the for the building itself. Like I said, I'm going to make the inside windows a little bit lighter so it looks like the lights are on in the window. And then, so this makes it look like, by putting that orange there, I just make it look like it's lit up. And then the awning can be, you know, whatever. It's really just one color. I'm going to stripe it maybe with a little bit of red here. Just give it something. It all depends on what it is. I mean, sometimes you want to just keep it the way it is, or sometimes you want to make it embellish on it a little bit. And now these windows are darker. So I'm going to first put the first story here. And then these windows, I'm just going to make darker. One, two, one, two. One, two, one, two. And then I'm going to take a small flat brush and make my slight, slightly smaller windows. I'm going to use my gouache again because the gouache is a little bit more opaque and so it won't see through. Whoops, a little bit too far. Whoops. <laughs> oh well, my window is a little bit bigger than I expected here. That's okay. So I'm just... See, I'm going pretty fast and I'm not making sure, I'm, I don't really care if it's exactly like the looks in the picture. They, they're windows and that's all that matters, that they're windows. And then up here, the same thing. We're going to just maybe make them go down like this. With our bigger brush. Again, I'm trying to also, you know, I don't want to spend the whole morning on this, doing this. I try to keep them at an hour, usually. And you can also pick up, and later on, like I said, I can also put white back in there. Like I can go back in with white, because I am using gouache, and so I can go back in and clean parts up that I kind of got rid of and I didn't do as good a job on. So now this dump here, we can get some nice, really dark darks. So let's use our use our rigger brush here. I go sideways again. Again, I like to go sideways with my lines, like I'm writing. You can use a ruler and then use your finger on a ruler on those little triangle rulers, diamond rulers, whatever they do. I'm hoping the picture is a little bit clearer than when on Thursday nights because I just, like I said, I, I had bought a camera that is 4K and so hopefully making this a little bit clearer than it has been on my screen. It does, definitely looks a little bit clearer so I'm hoping that it's the same for you guys that you're seeing it pretty nice and clear. I do need to think, I do think I need to have a little bit more lighting. I've got to up my lighting a little bit but other than that, I think it's getting better and better each time I do these little videos. Let's 
asking anything or saying anything. Hold on one second. Let me just refresh here. Sometimes I have to refresh to see if you guys are saying something. <laughs> Bring this out. This goes across. And then this side of the car should be a little bit, a little bit darker. And now while this is dry, it looks like it's dry, I'm gonna take, the reason I'm wearing gloves is I can take off the masking fluid really easily by just rubbing with my gloves. See how it just comes right off? And it's nice and dry, and so I don't have to even use like a lead rubber eraser or a rubber cement pickup. I can just use my gloves. Takes it right off. Now do make, always make sure that it's dry, totally dry before you start taking off your um, masking fluid. And you see that's going to be in the street. Just rubbing that, taking it off. And I also put it on the headlights so I don't have to worry about the headlights being going around them that small. And you can put on, you know, with a rubber brush or with a um, regular brush, small brush. A lot of people like to use soap on it. I just use water on it. I don't use actually use soap. And the whole bind, I like it because it the whole by masking fluid it repels so you can actually see where it's what it's repelling like you saw this was repelling the the watercolor so there we have it those are all the right here we have a few and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to go over those parts with a little bit of orange and you may ask which one do i do do i do the the um, gouache or the or the watercolor, it really doesn't matter because I'm using it pretty wet, and so it really does not matter. I'm putting this little bit of orange on there. Now I'll come back in later on with white paint, and then I'll go back again with white paint just to get the brights again through there and make things smaller. I probably didn't even need to use the masking fluid because sometimes masking fluid is a little bit too harsh. Um, for the paper, but I thought, what the heck, you know, I might as well try it and see both ways, because I, I can always go over it if I didn't like it. I could always go over it again, and then um, just put white paint on top of that. You really don't have to um, have both gouache and watercolor, because you can use them both kind of the same way, and the same way of using them, wet into wet or wet on dry. But if you're going to use watercolor thick, it's almost better to use the gouache than to use that thick because um, watercolor, transparent watercolor is not made to be used thick. And so you won't get the, it'll maybe, if you make it too thick, it'll flake off. And so it's not made to be like gouache. Gouache is made to be thick. I used to use it for um, ads. When, um, Advertise agency used to use it, our churches used to use um, gouache to do their ads. It's kind of interesting too. It's almost like they painted their ads. Okay, this time I have to put the headlights back in with white paint because I lost it. Now I'm going to go in with solid black and get underneath the black and maybe a little bit of blue, a little bit of warmth. Just really nice and dark. I'm going to go in here and get some nice dark darks in here. Like the tires are pretty much black, so you can go in there and get it pretty dark. Underneath the, the wheel well. Nice and dark. The front here. You know, each car has a different kind of look. You know, in the front, you can always choose to do it kind of like the manufacturer built it or just kind of make it generalized. I've seen a lot of people have a certain generalized look for cars. All depends on your style. You can do that, or you can make it look exactly like that, depending on how tight you are with your with your drawing. All comes down to your drawing. How well can you draw, and do you make it look exactly like the car, or do you kind of give it an interpretation of the car? Now let's get these. There's actually a light pole right here. Bring this down. 
couple of other things happening here. There's a window to the church. That's a circle here. It's almost like the Limelight Church in Chicago or the nightclub that used to be right on this corner. I don't think that is, though. I'm not sure where this is at, though. Um, I got this picture from Unsplash. So it's a place to get you some copy free images. And then I'm just going in here with the darks. Thanks, Betsy, Betsy, about uh, seeing it much clearer. I'm very glad, happy for that. <laughs> it's, a, it's a much better camera than my other camera I use, so I was hoping that it would be much, much clearer. So here's the wheels again, and here's a little bit of reflecting into the street. Nice darks on the street itself, underneath the car. And if you do something wrong, like this masking fluid is kind of off, I'm gonna put something here then that's lit up in the window. I'll put something there just so that I can get rid of that really bright, you know, because the masking fluid, again, it makes it really vibrant and really harsh white line and so, to get rid of that, I'm gonna have to make light there or just cover it up or we'll see what we can do for that. And these over here, I'm kind of making up because you really can't see this stuff in the picture. This side, I just added a little bit extra. And so I made that, made that up. Now we're gonna put a couple people in here. Let's give them, let's get some, I'm gonna give this guy like a red, red top and then he's got some, Next to him, it's a little bit darker here. Maybe there's a person right here that doesn't have an umbrella. He's underneath the awning looking in the window. A couple people back here, maybe. Little, maybe uh, dark umbrellas. All right. I think we have only a little bit left, and that's the lights. I'm going to go in with the light areas and put the lights on and things. Meaning, you know, solid light. And I, I also can go back in with the mask or with the um, gouache. And if I feel that there's a dark area I want to have a little bit thick, thicker, then that'd be fine too. So basically, what I'm going to do is go in here. We're almost done darker back here I'm gonna come back in with some of the to the church back here a couple more lines going through some of the dark lines because there are you know there's some dark lines going through here too making the street go kind of wet and now I'm going to go in with pure white. I'm just going to take pure white and just start highlighting areas and lights that are on. Like right here, there's a light that's on. Back here, there was a light that's on. In the windows, I may keep them a little bit orange. And these are thick. These are thick. Um, these are thick now. So I'm going with thick paint. I'm not worrying that I'm going to, you know, make it look, you know, transparent. I'm not even worried about that. I'm just going to make it thick. And here, little dots. And I actually feel I, I actually like the look of opaques on my um, on my watercolor paper. Uh, it just it gives it a really neat look. I don't know. Uh, I, I like gouache in the look that it gives a watercolor. It makes it look a little bit more real. It's almost like the thickness of the paint really makes it look kind of cool. I'll put the umbrella. Smear it with my gloves. There's some lights coming. This light is way down here. Smear it. Reflection in the windows. 
Maybe there's this light right here. Maybe there's a light on underneath here that just somehow looks like it's sliding in the street. And the top of roofs can be a little bit more cleaned up on the top of this roof right here. The car can be cleaned up a little bit. Maybe these windows are all on. Instead of being off, I'm gonna turn them on. people in there isn't that neat the way they the lights come up now and they're just all reflective and then these lines going this way and that way and you know, that's the fun part about um, doing it that that with transparent watercolor you have to get everything done right away but look at this I can go back in here and now it's almost like I'm doing a, a acrylic in an oil where I can go thick in there and I can go sit on top and I can correct things and make things look better and here and get some little line in here of the street and this is where that little grate is in the street no reflections of this car itself darker into the street I think we're almost done here let's put a little bit of light up in the window up here and then I think we're done guys I think we'll be done in about yep that'll be perfect not even an hour so we're gonna put a little couple of lights on in here. Let's put this one on, this one, this one. Or they're reflecting. They can be reflecting the street itself. So here, same thing. I'll put a couple of them in there. So don't be afraid of using gouache and watercolor together. I don't put them in the same palette because my whole band watercolors don't dry out. These may dry out if I keep them uh, thing, um, open like this. They dry out a little bit faster, and so I have these I have these new um, palettes that I use for gouache, and they have six little little levers here, and they have a silicone base, and this is silicone, and it sits on top. And it's like airtight then and waterproof, and so you can wet them, put them on this. I filled that up last week, and it's still just as pliable as it was the first week I used it. And I think that is it, guys. I'm just gonna take it off the paper and. Couple more little white dots here. I mean, you can have fun with this part. I mean, this is the fun part to go in here and just have. Let's make the car cars look shiny on the side of it. There's always a little bit of shininess to cars because they're again anything that's shiny is like a, it's like a wet street. Um, they reflects things around it. Right, so everything's reflecting when it's all shiny. Shiny is reflective, and so. Just go in there and a couple of little. All right, let's take the tape off. And we'll be done for this Saturday, or this Sunday. Sunday morning painting. Let's just put it on. It. Take the tape off. I'll show you what the painting looks like. So there you have it, guys. And with my new camera, let me just try this out for a second. But I think I can even go closer in on it. Look at that, I can go a little bit closer in on it, though I have other things in the way, so I can't go too big. But the new camera looks like it's gonna work pretty well. And um, I, think I think we're done. All right, guys. Have a great rest of the day, and um, I'll come back and follow me on Thursday nights is where I have a newsletter. If you go to my website at beckerart.net and sign up for my newsletter, and you'll see what we're painting, or just go to my website. My website will have it on there. I am redesigning my website also so that I'll have everything on there to know where to go. And I just started these Sunday morning ones only because I wanted to show you, I wanted to do some practicing myself on Sunday morning, so... Until next time, until next Thursday, and if I don't see you, have a great happy holiday and Merry Christmas. Bye-bye.